Dear Mr. Holmes, please let me thank you one more time for your help in solving the case of the Turkish medallion. I'm sure that if the story could go public, the whole country would be as grateful as I am to you. As you may have surmised, I have a very urgent and confidential matter which requires your immediate assistance. You probably are aware that we are going to celebrate the birthday of a very important person, a member of the government. I can't mention their name in this letter for obvious reasons. The most famous and accomplished artists were selected and invited to perform. We are confident about their reputations. However, we have concerns about one performer in particular, a young Italian diva, Gallia, as there are certain rumours circulating about her. She has also provoked great acclaim in every European capital where she has appeared. We want to include her in this gala event, but have reservations about her reputation. She is, as fortune would have it, in London for another engagement. Sir Bromsby has invited her to perform during a reception to commemorate the return of his daughter to England. Due to reasons of politics and security, I can't attend the reception myself. Apart from yourself, I do not know anyone else I would be able to complete a mission of such importance. Together with this letter, I am sending two invitations, as I assumed your eminent colleague, Dr. Watson, would be accompanying you. A cab will arrive at 221B Baker Street at 8pm to take you to Sheringford Hall. Even though I know that the prospect of attending a private concert given by perhaps the best voice in Europe is very attractive for a music lover like yourself, please allow nothing to distract you from this important mission. Yours sincerely, Lord Cavendish Smith. How can we refuse a mission of such importance? Appearances to the contrary, I believe that the future of the nation can depend on our presence. Are you with me? If the future of the nation depends upon our presence, Holmes, then you can count on me. Please come right in. According to the request of Lord Cavendish Smith, during the dinner you'll be seated together. What do you know about Sir Bromsby, Holmes? I have never met the man, and I do not follow what is written in the newspapers. However, I can tell you that Sir Bromsby is a man of approximately 50 years old, tall in stature. He is impulsive and may be prone to violent outbursts. He is of low birth, has few intimate friends, and does not like women. He must be a very aggressive businessman who would not hesitate to go beyond the law if it served his purposes. I'd like to add that today he is going to make a very important declaration concerning his business. And you, Watson, what have you heard about him? Well, I doubt that I would be able to give as detailed a description as you have just recited. Holmes, how can you say you do not know the man and give such an account? Watson, you know my methods. Look at the stage and the stand near the fireplace. It is obvious that they are prepared for a very tall man. I see the hostess and servants anxiously glancing in the direction of a door from which their employer must enter. Their expressions go beyond nerves and suggest fear. Only a violent and unpredictable man can cause such anguish. Now look at the guests. The men present at this party are mainly composed of military officers and rich entrepreneurs. All of them are in their fifties and are clearly business associates, so I decided that he is of their age. Furthermore, to have risen as rapidly as he has in this society, Sir Bromsby would have to be a very ruthless and intelligent businessman. The women present reveal much. Beautiful women and young girls, all neatly but rather cheaply dressed. Watson, look more carefully. There are no chaperones. No ladies would appear in public without suitable escort, I assure you. They stare at the youngest gentleman to find a convenient cavalier and cluck like chickens at the smallest idiocy. In short, a man who would invite only business associates and women of the lower classes to the birthday party of his only child must have few friends, rather poor taste in women, and little regard for his daughter. Another item of note, but not the least, observe that group of men speaking very quickly. 
It's a group of reporters armed with their notebooks gathered together now that the time of the address is coming. These are not the society reporters for the time sent to cover a gala birthday party. These are the regular reporters who would come only to gain news about the future of the Bromsby Empire. I will conclude by saying that no man except a lunatic would accept such an arrangement of tables and furniture. Look quickly, Watson. I hear applause. Sir Bromsby is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you all for attending this special reception. In fact, this moment is a turning point for many people. Oh my god! Watson, quick! Tell Miss Lambert not to allow anyone to leave and to send a man for the police immediately! The first handwriting is small and elegant. The second is hurried and forceful. Excuse me if I may. I am Sherlock Holmes. What do you wish to know? I must ask, who are you? I am the doctor from the village near the hall. Is he still breathing? He died instantly. Where is the bullet? It's still in the body. I must obtain police authorization to extract it. Thanks, doctor. Never mind. Good day. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Would you mind if I asked several questions? If it helps you. Did you notice anything peculiar at the time of the shooting? I jumped up and then I looked in the direction of the shot. There I saw that little flirt, I mean Miss Bromsby. She seemed to be placing something in her handbag amid a cloud of smoke. Then she rushed to the stage. I must say, her sudden inheritance should be a fine present for her birthday. What precisely was your relationship with the victim? We were partners with the old scoundrel. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Sir Bromsby. He personally invited me. He gave me every assurance there would be plenty of fresh meat, if you take my meaning. Well, there was, but some of it was quite cold. <laughs> were you an associate of the victim? Yes, he seems so much bigger when he's lying down rather than standing. Well, thank you very much. It is nothing, dear fellow. You do not seem the least bit alarmed. In India, I became quite familiar with the sound of gunshots. Therefore, their sudden occurrence does not alarm me as they would a woman or certain officers in attendance. Could you explain your presence at this reception? Bromsby sent me two invitations for myself and the wife. My wife has fainted due to the shock of these events. I do hope her condition will last a good while longer, so that I may toss off several glasses of this excellent sherry. Why didn't you intervene? It would have been of no use. Whoever he is, the man who did this is either a perfect shot or extremely lucky, because old Bromsby had no chance at all. Very well. Thank you. My pleasure. Look, what's this? That shot was dreadful, wasn't it? 
It's neither the first nor probably the last I shall hear in my life. Tell me, young man, are you a barman or not? Because I'm dying from thirst. Did you have a personal relationship with Sir Bromsby? What impertinence! I will answer questions of this nature only if the issue from my superiors or the authorities. And you, sir, are neither of those. Well, I must leave you now. All right, young man. Excuse me, could you answer some questions? You're quite welcome. Where were you at the moment this tragedy occurred? Like all the servants, I was in the ballroom. It was the special orders of the old crab. In my opinion, it was done in particular to have more people there to applaud him. Canny old bird, wasn't he? Are you personally at the service of the Bromsby family? Yes. There are five of us who serve in the Sheringford Hall. There are Mary and Sue, the maids, Carl, our chef, Lamb, Sir Bromsby's coachman, and myself. All the rest were bought in just for the reception. And where are the rest of the staff? Mary is cleaning downstairs. Sue went to comfort some little goose who had been crying bitterly. It's rather odd because it seemed to me she started crying before Sir Bromsby was shot. And the coachman? Lamb is at the main gate. Miss Lambert gave him specific instructions to throw out any reporters and ensure they do not re-enter the hall. However, it would not be good if he finds you've been asking questions here. Tell me, will my name appear in the newspaper? What sort of man was Sir Bromsby? I mean, as an employer? Troublesome and bad-tempered, but he paid well. Thank you for your help. My pleasure, sir. The handle is twisted down. It smells of gunpowder. I need something. The tracer powder is located at 1 meter 65 from the surface. This black cloth is large enough to conceal a person. Look, what's this? Black hair. This is diabolically heavy. I need something. It is a poor copy of a uniform button. The cannon insignias are hand-drawn. I help you? Hello, are you aware of what has just happened? Yes, it seems that our master has got himself killed, Scott told me that much, on his daughter's birthday, and all these nice dishes, it took me so long to prepare them, what a disaster! How would you describe Sir Bromsby? Well, as an employer, he was not easily satisfied, always insisting on some Indian or French dish. That old foulet put it into Sir Bromsby's head that this Frenchman prepare better meals than the English. He would have had my master eating frogs stuffed with snails if he could. 
a Frenchman. Yes, a squint-eyed Frenchman. That must be done like this, and this must be placed like that. Well, he may well be a connoisseur of fine cuisine and service, but of everything else... Miss Lambert dared not even contradict him about the tablecloth's colour, though Bromsby hated white and insisted on blue to match the colour of the daughter's eyes. And look how he placed the tables in the ballroom. I have never seen tables arranged in such a manner. The lid of your dustbin is quite heavy. It makes some noise, doesn't it? At least we know when somebody closes it. I was in the cellar and I heard the lid closing a little before that what you said was the shot. I heard it again right after. But that surely must have been Mary, our maid. You say it was Mary, the housemaid. How can you be sure? The first time I saw her with my own eyes, uh, when she came to empty the rubbish. She cautioned me not to fall asleep in the storeroom. She always has something amusing to say. Uh, the second time I didn't see her, I only heard the lid close. I will let you get back to your work. All right. Good night, sir. There is a greasy substance on the door handle. Seems to be a sauce? I need something. Curious, this flaky ash does not come from this cigar. It is a size 7. Look, what's this? Red greasy hair. There is dust. Excellent! A small caliber pistol. A right model. Train and ship tickets from Geneva to London. This room was rarely used. Everything else is in order. Very interesting. What a pleasant picture. And this lady is wearing a very nice earring. Look, what's this? Train and ship tickets from Geneva to London. A 
calling card written in French. There is a greasy substance on the door handle. Seems to be a sauce. Excuse me, but would you be Mary? What do you want, mister? Did you hear the shot? Of course I heard everything. But I didn't stop my work. Imagine that someone else had been killed and not my master. Oh, he would have given me a good talking to. What's happened here, on this carpet? An idiot from Hartford's turned over the fowl. Sir Bronsby passed by without even taking notice. It did seem his mind was elsewhere these days. Of course, it was probably because of Miss Lavinia's homecoming. What do you think of your employer? He could be the very devil at times, but not the worst. If you had just known my father. And then the master was so generous with our wages. Did you go to the well during the reception? Yes, I went there once to empty my bucket. But that was before the dreadful shooting happened. Only once? I told you, only the one time. I even called out to that lout Carl not to fall asleep. Oh, he spends his time drinking in the storeroom, and I often find him asleep there. Oh, but please, sir, you won't mention any of that to Miss Lambert, will you? And the Frenchman, how could you describe him? He's a sly one. He's also cross-eyed. Oh, but most handsome and very talkative. Ask Miss Lambert. She's quite keen on him. Did you observe anyone pass this way after the shot was fired? No one's come this way. Not from the moment I returned after emptying my bucket and the old while I've been cleaning. I only saw Scott, who was in the ballroom. He half opened the door to tell me the news. Thank you, Mary. Not to worry, sir. Blue tablecloths, yet they are shorter than the white ones used in the ballroom. This is a woman's handwriting. What do all these annotations mean? <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I am Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Mr. Holmes, the infamous detective. We are heaven blessed by your presence. I am afraid I am still in shock. Tell us what you saw. I was behind Sir Bromsby when it all happened. I am sorry, but as such I could not see anything of interest. But I am convinced that Miss Lavinia had nothing to do with it. Whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? Oh, I forget myself. We haven't been properly introduced. I am Herman Grimble, advisor to the late Sir Melvin Bromsby and minority shareholder of Bromsby Enterprises. So you knew Sir Bromsby well, then? What a sad end for such a great man. We first met in India several years ago. That would have been before the birth of Miss Lavinia. We have been business associates and friends ever since that moment. What sort of man was Sir Bromsby? He was a man with strong character that at times seemed excessive. He was unyielding, but he was a good man. 
Have you any knowledge about the succession of his business interests? I believe that Sir Bromsby had drawn up his will with his attorney and friend Horace Fowlett. When it is read, we will know more about the specifics. But I can assure you that nothing therein would threaten Bromsby Enterprises. And where is this Mr. Fowlett? He must have been here, because he would have most certainly been invited. Although he is hardly a person of high society, where could he be, I wonder? We have found Sir Bromsby's speech. There's something quite puzzling about it. Ah, you talk about the notes that I left for him. Sir Bromsby always improvised his speeches in public as well as in business. Nevertheless, it was still necessary to remind him about particular points. So I sometimes made notes for him on a sheet of paper. Hold on, he must have made that odd notation himself. It says something about a peasant and a snake. What could it mean? Did Sir Bromsby have any enemies? Oh, there are always those who envy a man who is successful in business. But to say that Sir Bromsby had enemies? No, I cannot think of anyone who would desire his death. According to many witnesses, Sir Bromsby seemed anxious. Well, he really was a little worried these days, but it was most certainly due to the strains associated with the reception, ensuring a good time for his guests and the happiness of his daughter. They have not seen each other in six years. Perhaps he could not see her in the room. Thank you very much. I am at your disposal. Please, sir, I have nothing to tell you. Everyone stands ready to accuse me of this foul deed. I have done nothing. I have only seen my father die before my very eyes on day of my majority. This young lady tells the truth. I can attest to her every move since she first appeared in the doorway. Beg your pardon for speaking so boldly, miss. Where were you at the moment of the shooting? I was near the bar speaking with Colonel Patterson. Everybody started applauding and turning towards the stage. I turned to look through the crowd. Did you notice anything in particular? When one of the doors opened, I did see a person hidden from the other's view. A beautiful young lady stood just at the threshold. I felt somewhat ashamed for staring at her so intensely, but her considerable charms captured my full attention until the dreadful shooting took place. Are you sure it was Miss Bromsby? Yes, Colonel Patterson was next to me and can confirm what I saw. It seems to me that no one else was near us at that precise moment. What is your reason for being here? I owe it to Colonel Patterson. We met each other several days ago at his club. He kindly persuaded me to accompany him.